Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering James Bond. Okay, so the new woke James Bond supervillain hates open borders and refuses to do diversity hiring for his evil empire. Yes, this is absolutely what's actually going on. It's not a parody. It's from a new James Bond book that just came out this summer. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. I'm trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. So if you can't subscribe, please do subscribe. From NotTheBee.com, the villain in the new James Bond novel wants to replace, quote, King Charles the Woke doesn't like open borders or gay Marxism and doesn't do diversity hires. That's right. The Woke have gone and selected an anti-Marxist conservative as the absolute and total villain who's looking to take over the world. Of course, the villain does sound based. Here's what he's been accused of. The villain's name is Burkett. He's an ex Tory, which is conservative, MP, famous for promoting COVID vaccine and mask wearing and 5G conspiracy theories, which had spilled over into the usual anti-immigrant, anti-EU, anti-BBC, anti-mainstream media, anti-cultural Marxist, climate change denial pronouncements. It was an anti-trans diatribe that eventually got him kicked out of the party and he'd soon after set up the new Freedom Party. Oh no, the new Bond supervillain doesn't like open borders, thinks Marxism is bad, dislikes government propaganda, and won't get their vaccines, and hates global elites? Bond was struck by something. It was a long while since he'd been at any kind of function that was almost exclusively full of men. It felt strange. There was not even a pretense of diversity there. That's right, James Bond, the guy who used to stop communists who wanted nuclear war or mad scientists from poisoning the planet and repopulating it with a master race, now feels uncomfortable in a room full of presumably white men. Where are the gay flags? Where are the transgender activists of color? Where are the twerking drag queens? Is there anybody at all in this English gathering named Mohammed? How will Bond survive this? In 20 years, we've gone from having M called Bond a misogynist pig to Bond becoming a neurodivergent queer ally who loves his globalist pals over at the World Economic Forum, which totally doesn't mirror the shadowy organization of elites plotting world domination like Spectre. Athelstan hadn't been the least bit concerned about ensuring that half of the people he'd hire to carry out his coup should be women or non-white or disabled. This was an unapologetically old school gathering in Athelstan's world. He was king and could do whatever he wanted. That's correct. He didn't hire women or disabled people for his evil organization. And you know, that's if you're going to create an evil organization to take over the world, that is no excuse to exclude certain kinds of people. And merit is also not an excuse. You don't want the most dastardly villains. You don't want the most powerful henchmen. You want the neurodivergent, gay Marxist, some women, some people of color type of villains to join your team so you can be diverse, if not effective. Yes, this is all for a real book called, quote, On His Majesty's Secret Service that came out this summer by Charlie Hickson, who has been involved with the Bond franchise before, and we will get into that. This would make Ian Fleming roll in his grave. Synopsis of the new James Bond book on His Majesty's Secret Service in which James Bond goes undercover to stop a sinister anonymous right-wing populist who is building a secret right-wing coalition to fight mass immigration and woke, which he thinks are destroying Britain. Well, they probably were destroying Britain. The woke create idiotic straw men out of anyone who doesn't think exactly like them, then imagine them to be the supervillains plotting to destroy the world. Ah, yes, they think. It's the Jesus-following conservative family man who doesn't believe unlimited illegal immigration from countries that don't share baseline values is the one who will destroy humanity. What a great idea, they think, to have James Bond fight for a cranky old globalist and his elitist pals. That'll show these freedom-loving extremists who don't like totalitarian control imposed through a lab-created virus from China. This is why Hollywood can't write good villains anymore. They'd make Darth Vader a church-going monogamous married man 
who doesn't believe in the merits of universal health care. These people simply have no idea what good and evil mean anymore. Well, in that part, I disagree. We're operating on two separate systems. And from a certain point of view, good is good and evil is evil. And from an evil point of view, a different point of view, it's quite the opposite. And that seems to be the conflict of today that we're all in right now. Now, this guy, Charlie Higson, has been involved with James Bond before. And if you noted that, hey, wait a minute, James Bond was kind of woke in Daniel Craig's last film. This is the guy that was responsible for that, it looks like. Let's get into the story from The Guardian. Daniel Craig has given us woke James Bond, says Charlie Higson. And here he highlights how much the spy has changed since Ian Fleming created him in 1953. And there is Daniel Craig wearing a bathing suit in the water, and that is to replace the Bond girls. He gets into it here. He's the brooding bad boy who drives luxury cars, jumps through windows, and wrestles on top of moving trains, all while having an array of beautiful women on his arm. But the one thing James Bond has never been is woke until now. Thanks, Charlie Hickson. The author of the Young Bond novel says Daniel Craig, who plays cinema's most famous spy for the fifth and final time in upcoming film No Time to Die, has given us woke 007, who's tender, cries, and gets into the shower in his tuxedo to comfort a woman. Craig, who moonlights as a producer on No Time to Die, so he's been heavily involved in the property, has been vocal about his work to ensure the inclusion of strong women in the Bond franchise, and even revealed that he chose to wear his now famous blue swim trunks in the 2006 Casinos Royale as an antidote to bikini-clad Bond girls. Why would you ever need an antidote to Bond girls? That was one of the things that worked well for the franchise. Quote, there are certain things attached to Bond which we would say, no, you can't do that anymore, Craig told the Radio Times. We're very conscious of what's going on in the world at the moment, but we're still storytellers. We're still trying to entertain an audience. No, they're not. They're trying to eliminate the past to put forth their new sick agenda. The 53-year-old actor who lost teeth, tore muscles, and severed tendons over the course of 15 years of shooting for Bond says he was more naked than the women in the upcoming film, adding, I've designed it that way. Hickson highlighted the level of change since Ian Fleming devised the character of Bond in 1953. Quote, would the original Bond survive in our modern world or would cancel culture succeed where Spectre has failed so often and finish him off for good. Fleming, Hickson said, would be bewildered by many of the changes in society. He'd be able to mansplain the correct temperature that champagne should be served at, but he'd be all at sea trying to negotiate the correct use of pronouns. But he maintained that the writer also, quote, kicked against the old-fashioned 1950s view that women should be simpering housewives put on a pedestal and wooed. Many in his books were athletic and independent, just like the heroines in the new film. Bond co-producer Barbara Broccoli said they chose Craig because they were looking for someone who would redefine Bond. Quote, Daniel has given Bond an inner life. His Bond is allowed to be vulnerable, she said. Quote, coming out of the sea in skimpy shorts made him a sex object, not Eva Green, added Hickson, whose books center on a teenage Bond in the 1930s. Asked if he would support a more diverse appointment as his replacement, meaning a new diverse person to take the place of James Bond, Craig said, quote, there should simply be better parts for women and actors of color. Why should a woman play James Bond when there should be a part just as good as James Bond, but for a woman? Well, he's going to start to find out that that's not good enough for them because they need to destroy everything in the past. It's not sufficient to have a Black Widow type of character who is powerful and independent and beautiful in her own right, you need to take away the example of anyone who is independent and powerful who is a male. I will say I can at least appreciate how this writer is saying, of course, Ian Fleming would think this is total garbage because it is total garbage. He's not interested in trying to maintain what Bond was and trying to tell a story from that point of view of that character as if people like that shouldn't exist in the world anymore. The James Bond character shouldn't exist anymore. We should replace him. We should wipe him out. That's the problem with the cultural Marxist and the woke. They're pushing to absolutely eliminate. It's not even a question. Eliminate characters and any kind of people, really. They need to be changed to their new agenda who see things differently than they do and don't see the value in what they're trying to push as their progressive policies. Let me know what you think of all this. In the comments below, do you think there's still room in the world for an actual real James Bond that would act and behave the way James Bond would? Do you think it's okay to have beautiful women in bikinis 
actually be in a James Bond movie. I don't know why they'd have to take them out, but I'm hopefully you agree with me that, yeah, of course there's plenty of room for Bond girls because they're Bond girls. There's a role for them. Why take them away? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.